Well, today's interview is with a man who is in his fourth year as the head football coach at Southern Miss. And as you can see, working tirelessly daily to get Southern Miss football back on top. So with all that said, I'm bringing you head coach Will Hall. And coach, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great, Marshawn. It's uh, It's been a fun week, uh, spring break, being able to spend some time with my family, my two boys. They're getting older. You know it happens fast. And uh, we were able to practice five times and then have a spring break. And now we're going to come back and go five more and then have an Easter break and then go five more again. So it splits up nice uh, with installing our new schemes and also being able to be extremely physical, which you and I both like to do. And uh, so we've been able to kind of hit and get after it and then take a little time off and, and heal bumps and bruises and do it again. And I love the way we've set it up and and just blowing and going, man, with, with uh, year four, it's time to win. It's time to get this program back where it's supposed to be. And uh, I really like a lot of the pieces that we've been able to put in place here. I love the foundation we've built and uh, excited about what year four has got a chance to be. Coach, perfect way to put it, because this is one of the more intriguing spring practices that I can ever remember in Southern Miss football history. First up, you got a new offensive coordinator in Chip Long. What can we expect out of this offense? Yeah, you know, well, Chip is a is a highly regarded offensive mind that's done really well at, at numerous stops in his past. He's been around some of the elite of the elite in college football, uh, with most recently being at Louisville. Uh, that's probably had a profound impact on his philosophy coming in here from a recent standpoint. You know, people that watch some of Chip's offenses from the past compared to what you're going to see upcoming – I think you're going to see more screens, uh, more loose play. We're calling them loose plays, plays that we get it out on the perimeter to our good players where they can do stuff with it. You're going to see tight end involvement more for two reasons. One, Chip coaches tight ends and has always been a great tight end developer. But then number two, we've just got more talent in that room. So, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see more, like I said, more screen plays, more loose plays more tight end involvement, and uh, it's been good to have him, like I said, because he has he knows exactly what he's looking for, what he wants. And uh, we got some really good offensive coaches on staff, you know, that are learning his system, and, uh, and it's been fun to watch them put it in place. Coach, I love that. I've always said that for years in college football, the most underutilized position is tight end, so I like hearing that, man. Get those big guys the ball. And speaking of the big guys up front, Coach, the old line. What can we expect from the big boys? Yeah, you know, that's something that we've uh, been attacking steadily since we got here. We inherited, you know, a football team that I think had six or seven offensive linemen on scholarship. And to be quite frank with you, a lot of those weren't Division I uh, worthy players. Uh, we have – the offensive line is, is a position that you have to sign young kids and develop. So it's not a position you're going to reap the rewards immediately. Uh, but we've had three straight recruiting classes where we've signed really good offensive linemen. We've kept them and we've developed them. You're going to see a more sleek offensive line. You're going to see an offensive line that is uh, smaller and thinner. Uh, that's not to say they're not strong, uh, but 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 they, they move around better. We've got more of them. And they were all highly recruited kids. You're going to see a younger offensive line, you know, because we, 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 those guys still, you know, are – juniors, redshirt sophomores, true sophomores, and redshirt freshmen. But, man, they, they are talented. They are hungry. They're mean and tough, and uh, they're learning this system. And that's another reason why you're going to see more screens and more loose plays on the perimeter because those guys can run and get out and move. I love that. Yeah, big boys up front are so important. So I, I like hearing those words. And, and people watching this, let's get on to quarterbacks because that's, that's the big topic, Coach. But, uh, I mean, what a talented group you have. Florida State transfer, Tate Roadmaker, Ethan Crawford with his, uh, you know, he's got some experience now. John White, all that, you know, talent he's got coming in. And Billy Wiles, obviously, all the experience. Man, what a, how's it going, that quarterback battle right now? Yeah, it's been it's been great because we've got guys that can play. You know, Marshawn, I mean, again, that's another room where we have recruited at a high level. Every one of those four kids you just named had lots of opportunities uh, out of high school as well as lots of opportunities if they were transferring. Uh, you know, they're all four battling and picking up the new system. Uh, they all have their own separate, unique skill set. 
but but and, and Chip will parlay or Chip will feature what they do, you know, as it goes. Right now, we're just kind of installing the scheme in and of itself. But whoever wins that job, we're going to have a talented guy there. And we're going to have a guy that has a redeeming quality. You know, that's what we've talked about for for a long time. And I know I know Southern Miss fans are ready to be good at quarterback again. That's what, you know, when we recruited John this year and we recruited Tate this year, and then last year we recruited Ethan and Billy, the thing we said was, man, you're coming to a place with a rich and storied quarterback tradition that is starving for good quarterback play right now. We've not had it in some time. And so – they're all competing, and as you know, man, uh, the cream rises to the top. I mean, you were a great linebacker that was in a room filled with a lot of other really good linebackers, and you had to scratch and claw every day to prove your worth, and that's what's going on in that room right now. Oh, I love it, man. People fired up to see who wins that battle, so maybe the, maybe the best man wins. So, Coach, the skill position they're going to throw to, those wide receivers, what can we expect right there? Yeah, that's a position that we're still in a little bit of a development uh, situation. We've signed some really good transfers. We brought in three at mid-year. Uh, Larry Simmons, highly recruited young man, four-star recruit. Dakota Thomas, a uh, great junior college player that got hurt early in the year, or he would have been a power five guy, no doubt. And then Keyshawn Buckley, who did some great things out at Garden City. So we brought in three older guys at mid-year coupled with a lot of young guys that we've recruited and developed here that are really talented, like J.J. Butler and Davis Dalton. Ty Mims is back. Uh, we don't have a senior in that room. You know, we are young in that room, but we're young and talented. So uh, Desmond Lindsay is doing a great job developing them. Uh, Coach Long is kind of starting to learn what they can and can't do. And uh, we've got really, really good competition right there. Matt Nixon's another guy that He's coming off injury from West Jones. He was injured before he got here and is kind of finally getting well. And Jack Swing, we moved to slot receiver and Chandler Merrill. So we've got some talent in that room, and they're growing and learning how to be college football players. All right, Coach, with big shoes to fill, too, in the running back position. I mean, Frank Gore Jr., man. I'm going to miss that smile that lights up a room. It'll be lighting up the NFL. So how do, how do you fill those big shoes, and who do, who do you think stepping up at the running back position? Yeah, you know, the only way to fill uh, the shoes of a great player, Marshawn, is to hope you've recruited really well before he left. I mean, when you look at the Georgias and Ohio States and Bamas, they they have guys get drafted every year, and then they have another one because they recruit well. And I think if Frank was here today, I think he would tell you that that room's got a lot of talent in it. Uh, you know, Drake Clark coming back, Southern Miss fans got to see a lot of him last year. You're talking about a guy that started 12 games at Memphis when Memphis was really good. Uh, and, and it brings a lot to the table from Starkville. He's one of our few seniors on offense. Kenyon Clay is a young man who has uh, got a chance to be a star. I mean, when he's had his opportunities to shine, like that big 29-yard touchdown at, at, at Louisiana Lafayette, uh, you know, or pardon me, Louisiana. I don't, don't, don't want to say the wrong. Oh, no. No. Kenyon's <laughs> got that build, too. He's kind of got that linebacker build, man. So it's going to be tough to bring. And then, uh, you know uh, – J.Q. Gray is a young man that uh, we redshirted last year from Oak Grove that is electric, brings a lot of diversity and speed to the field. Uh, I think he'll remind Southern Miss fans of a Tracy Lampley type guy. Uh, you've got Jalen Washington who early enrolled, who was North Mississippi Player of the Year. And then you've also got Chandler Pittman right there, you know, who's done a lot as a jack-of-all-trades guy for us and has been a phenomenal special teams player. So a lot of competition, a lot of kids that were really good players and, and – um, they're doing a lot of good things. All right, Coach, thanks for those offensive updates. But as, as you know, my favorite part of an update, the nasty bunch, man. You got a new defensive coordinator, Clay Bignell. I had him on my show, got to you know some X's and O's with what he's doing. So what are your thoughts on that scheme and getting this nasty bunch really nasty? Yeah, I'm really excited about Clay. Uh, excited about getting back to an overall philosophy in our football program that I'm most comfortable with. Uh, it's a scheme that at its roots and at its core that I've run in my previous stops uh, when we when we when we built great programs there. Uh, I'm more comfortable with this philosophy. Uh, it, it's more of a zone quarters based scheme that can get to one high and bring zone pressures. Uh, play man when you need to, but we want to get we want to recruit really good players and get their eyes looking at the football where they can run really fast and hit really hard you know, and not be slowed by thinking. And also, if a quarterback makes mistakes, and most group of five quarterbacks make mistakes, most group of five quarterbacks make a lot of mistakes in a game. 
We want to have our eyes on the ball where when they make a mistake, we can tip it up and make an interception and get more takeaways. And um, I think I think our kids have really drawn to that, and uh, it's been fun to watch. We're playing hard and swarming so far through five days of spring ball uh, and excited to have Clay and, and the rest of our defensive staff and, and what we're building there. Oh, good stuff. Good nasty bunch update. Yes, yeah, defense were – at his prior stop, they create a lot of turnovers, so that's huge, Coach. Uh, now, Coach, had a lot of changes now in this offseason. Obviously, this is year four for you. So what can fans expect and get really excited about year four of Coach All Football? Yeah, I think the biggest change uh, within our program that that maybe you'll see and subconsciously you'll see and not really know you're seeing it is there's just more accountability in the program. And that's that's strictly because we're finally above the APR, you know, threshold there. I mean, we inherited a program that was so far below the water in APR that, Marshawn, you know, man, when Coach Bauer was here, if, if a player didn't want to, act right or do what was required of him, he was he had a few opportunities to change or he was gone. And uh, we inherited a program that we couldn't do that. We had to keep every player, no matter what they did, right, wrong, or indifferent, and build that APR back up. And we've been able to do that for three years. And now we're to the point of how a college football program should be run or how, like I said, I was able to run other programs in the past. And uh, so, you know, if, if 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 accountability, if a player is not doing what they're supposed to do to be a Golden Eagle, then they don't get to be a Golden Eagle anymore. And so there's just way more urgency and accountability in the program. That's probably been the hardest thing uh, in the first three years here is getting that back where it was supposed to be so we could run the program in a way that you should be able to run it. Uh, there's a lot of urgency in the program from the top down, from me all the way through. Um uh, and, uh, man, it just, I'm, I'm excited about it. Like I said, we've recruited well, and it's time to win. You know that. I know that. Look, I'm. it's time to win. Nobody hates losing more than me. I'm disappointed we haven't won more faster. But I think the future is has got a chance to be really good. Yeah, Coach, it seems like the piece is in place for this year. I mean, the recruiting classes you put together, best in G5. So, year four, trust me, I'm excited. You need to be excited too, people. Hey, Coach, what kind of funny thing happened along the way in the offseason – a game at Kentucky to kick off the season. Now, the Kenny household, you know that caused a little tension. My wife was born and raised a Kentucky Wildcat fan. Fortunately, she chose Southern Miss to cheer for. But, man, that first game at Kentucky, is that a little extra pep in the step for everybody, knowing you open up at that SEC school? Yeah, there's no doubt. We came here, we wanted to build this program back to where when we played those teams, we were in those games and, and had a chance – you know, to to win some of those games like like you guys used to do back in the day. And, uh, you know, last year at the end of the year, we played Mississippi State on the road, and it was a one-score game in the fourth quarter, had our opportunities. And now we go to Kentucky, uh, and there's another opportunity provided there. And uh, hopefully we've built this program back to where we're going to be in position. You put yourself in that arena, it's eventually going to happen. We're excited about that game one, man. Coach Stoops has done a phenomenal job there. He's built that program the right way. and uh, But we're going there to lay it on the line and to put everything we've got into it. And uh, Because we know, man, if we could get that done, that could put Southern Miss back on the map like, like we're all trying to get it to. Oh, yeah, big opening right there, Coach. I'll, I'll be fired. I've already made our plans. So. Go to Kentucky for game one, so see you there, Coach. Now, Coach, you have been just nonstop, 24-7 for Southern Miss football, the NIL to the top collective, raising money. It is a vital, vital time for the future of Southern Miss football financially. P5, G5 split, seems like things like that are coming, man. Talk about the to the top collective and the importance of the future of it for Southern Miss football. Yeah, it's the single most important thing, uh, not only for our athletics, but for our university as a whole, for also the economy of the surrounding area. Uh, because, you know, we've got to get to functioning uh, at a little bit higher level from a collective standpoint, because when this split happens, and the split is coming, guys. I mean, it's going to happen. Uh, when the split comes, you're going to have a breakaway of some elite resource teams at the top 
And then that's going to cause some new leagues to be formed or some new alliances to be formed and uh, new TV deals to be formed. And we want to position ourselves. TV money is what it's all about, right, Marshawn? I mean, the biggest difference in Southern Miss in 1980 and the teams we were playing with compared to now is 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 years worth of TV money. That's all it is. And so you want to position yourself to get the best TV deal possible because it affects everything. It affects enrollment. It affects overall uh, population of the surrounding area. I mean, you're talking about the opportunity to grow from 16,000 to over 20,000 students. You're talking about growing this 150, 160,000 Hattiesburg area to over 200,000. When you talk about going to 2040 to 2045, if we can latch a hold of that. And the way to do it is to show we can function that way. And there's no reason why we can't, you know, uh, it's been my goal, you know, to get us to function off a million dollars a year. I mean, Marshawn, that's only 2,000 people giving $500 a year, which is $42 a month. Like we've got, we'll have 5,000 people at Pete Taylor Park this weekend. You know, we have so, we have strength in numbers so much better than so many people at our level. And uh, we've just got to band together and do it. And uh, we've got to quit saying, oh, I don't like this is the new way things are going. I don't like it. I wish we'd go back to the old way. That mentality has held us back sometimes in the past, and it can't. We cannot let it do it again. We've got to embrace the new, and it can be our edge. It can be our edge, and uh, I think I've been pleased with how it's grown. I've been pleased with how our people are embracing it, and uh, man, we just got to keep growing it. Heck yeah, it's a vital time right now, and easy to join for literally, coach. Like you said, the price of a family fast food run, you know to join To The Top Collective and make a huge difference. The website's very easy. Go to To The Top Collective, click football, click amount. It's, it's easy done for the price of a family fast food run, Coach. <laughs> I mean, literally. So, Coach, thanks so much as we wrap things up. What, what's a, another message or just a good message you have for the fans to get them all fired up for 2024? Yeah, I just want the fans to know, man, that – that uh we have we have built this program back right and and I want you to be proud of that. I don't want you to be proud that we went 3 and 9 last year. I'm certainly not proud of it, but we've recruited, we've out recruited everybody relative to our competitive level uh and we're doing great in academics and other areas and it's time to win. I certainly understand that. And um but jump on board with this team going into it cuz we got a chance to do some special things, but we do need everybody. I've said it since I've gotten here that Southern Miss, we've got just enough people that if we all band together, we could do something really special. And that kind of goes back to the collective. If we all band together, we could have the best group of five collective in America. Like we say we have the best fan base, we'll prove it. Let's have the biggest collective. That's all, that's all, all the collective is, is a barometer to measure your fan base. And uh, we can do that. And uh, so, man, just keep supporting, keep believing, and uh, – we're, we're headed in a good direction, and I'm excited to be your coach. I love it here. Oh, thank you, Coach. Great message right there. Nobody in the Sun Belt can match our tradition. So when you win this year, they're in for a lot of uh, a lot of turmoil from Southern Miss fans winning again. So, But thanks so much again, Coach, for uh, being on my show today. Man, I always appreciate your support, Marshawn. Appreciate everybody. And uh, anything I can do for you, man, you let me know. Likewise, always, Coach. So from our head man in charge and myself, I think it'd be a great deal to close the show with a big Southern Miss. To the top. To the top. I need to try it first. Yeah.